Hello and welcome to my video. As you can see, I have a big pile of stuff um, sort of surrounding me and on my bed. So obviously today I'm going to be doing a haul. This haul is solely comprised of all of the materials and objects that I need to use in my upcoming solo show. So I'm going to be um, kind of just going through all of these odds and ends and talking about them and then talking about sort of how they fit into the work that I'm making and but yeah I just wanted to talk about uh, what I got and where I got it from and just kind of give you an overview. There's not really an order. I'm going to try and be a little organized and I'm also going to try and put stuff away as I go through it or kind of like clear the space. My room has become very very cluttered since I've started sort of gathering materials it's because I just like have limited storage in my home so everything has sort of ended up in my room. Because I knew I wanted to film this haul I've been holding on to things a little bit more so I feel like after this is all done I'll be able to put things away in their proper space. So the first box I have to my left is um, this box from Candle Science. So Candle Science is a candle making company and I've never used um, them before. I've never made candles before actually so this is my first real candle making endeavor is this show and from Candle Science I ended up purchasing some jars and some lids to pour the wax into. So I bought 12 uh, silver metal flat lids and these are for three wick candles. Um, and they're just, I'll take one out and show you, but they're pretty standard candle lids. So they're just these silver ones and then they have this sort of like suction um, kind of rubbery material. I also got some bronze metal flat lids and I got 12 of those as well. They're kind of the same deal. They're a little bit smaller, um, so these are more for like a, a one wick or maybe even a I would say a one wick candle. I ordered some jars. So I ended up getting some glass jars. These are the Libby um, glass jars and these are the straight sided jars. So they're really uh, kind of generic votive jar. Um, I believe these hold around 9.5 ounces and these will go with the copper lids. And I ordered 12 of those and they come in this this case and luckily none of them were broken. And then these are the three wick um, jars which I'm trying to hold that over to show you. This is 12 of them. And these are also straight-sided glass, I believe they're Libby jars. These are kind of your standard uh, three-wick, and these will go with the silver lids. The Candle Science gave me a free one-ounce scent, which is really nice of them. So I got the Toasted Pumpkin Spice, uh, one ounce of the Toasted Pumpkin Spice, and I'll definitely be making a candle or two with this. So I'm excited. Actually, I didn't smell it, so maybe I'll let me smell it. Oh. Wow. It's very... Wow, it smells really good. It's really... It is pumpkin-y. It smells like fall. It's very, like, warm and... Very spiced. It smells like a pumpkin pie. Maybe I'll talk about some more candle making things while I'm on the subject. So I ordered some other candle jars and some other candle supplies from a website called Lone Star uh, Candle Company. So here is our Lone Star Candle Supply. For Lone Star, they had a kind of a cool thing where you didn't have to order jars by the dozen, so I ended up 
kind of picking and choosing different sample jars that I wanted. The one problem with that is that you end up spending a lot more money. So I ended up spending way more money on just 12 jars than I would have if I had ordered them in bulk from perhaps a another website. But I was testing things out and trying to figure out which shapes I liked and sizes and whatnot, so it's okay. So I've already made some of these candles, um, just FYI. I ordered these kind of classic Yankee candle looking jars with the bubble lid. I think it's called like an apothecary jar. And then they just have this cute little bubble lid. This is a very classic uh, sort of 16 ounce jar, bubble jar. So I ordered two of these. And then I ordered the smaller uh, 10 ounce bubble jars as well. And then with that, I also ordered six of these wooden lids. And then the jars that they are meant to go to are these, they're called the Libby status jars. And so I ordered uh, six of the status jar and three of them arrived broken. So I filed it, they were really nice about it, and they sent me three new ones, but then um, when I, so these are the three new ones that they sent me, but when I got the box, when I opened the box, one of them was broken, so that I feel like at this point, I'm not really going to say or do anything about it, because I just feel like ugh, I don't want to keep making them send me more candles, if I don't know, I feel just like, I feel like first time is fine, but the second time I just feel like I'm just like bothering them and I guess I can forego um, one candle. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but it's okay. I don't know. Let me know what you would do um, in the comments because I'm, I'm sort of torn. But I want to open one of these up because they're really cool. They have this kind of like bottom that flares out, so they're a little bit different than um, the straight sided kind of standard candle jar. So, this is the bottom. It's, yeah, see how it kind of just like comes out a little bit? It's really cute. So, then you have this wooden lid that goes with it, and you just, just looks like that when you fill it with your wax. And then I ordered these kind of, they're, I don't really know what kind of jar this is. This is kind of like a bubble jar, um, and it comes with this uh, silver lid. I ordered two of these from Lone Star as well. Oh, and also from Lone Star, I ordered um, some candles, some wick stickers. And so basically, when you are putting the wick in the candle, you need to fix it um, to the glass. So usually people do like hot glue or wick stickers or whatever. Um, I tried a couple with hot glue and I found that the that it wasn't really staying very well. Um, and so I ordered these wick stickers. And basically what you do is you just put it to the bottom of the wick and then cut it to size, whatever you need to do, and then put it into the candle and it'll stay. And they're just, they just come in these little sheets and they're um, double-sided and they just look like that. I ordered like a hundred of them and it was probably like a couple do dollars, but it's just made my process a lot easier. The last candle containers that I ordered are from a place called Fillmore Container, which is not quite a candle place, it's more of a, just a general container supply, um, glass, plastic, whatever kind of uh, jars you need. And so I ordered these really little or smaller um, screw top jars, and I believe these are 9 ounces. And I just thought they were cute, and um, they kind of look like the Bath & Body Works, like smaller jars with the black lids. Um, so I was really going for that vibe. I ordered... 12 of them, and then <laughs> the lids like came in this bag, let me just rip that open, I haven't even looked at them yet, um, and then they're just these black screw on, uh, screw top lids, and so it just goes like that. I don't know how I feel about the white edging on it, um, I was hoping that it would be all black, I think I can make do. I know this is a lot of information, so I will leave the link 
for everything that I got in the description box below. So basically anything that I got online, you will be able to also purchase if that is what you're into. I also ordered some candle wicks. I'm just verifying where I got them right now. I got them from uh, I got them from Etsy uh, from an account called Vintage Bead Jewelry. They were like $11, I believe, and I think it's I don't know how many. Oh, it's 120 pieces. So they're just these really simple, you know, white wick candles with the little metal um, flat on the bottom, and this, they just came in this bag. So I ran out of candle wicks, and I just needed to re-up some more. Instead of buying the same ones I did on Etsy, I decided to buy a hundred candle wicks from CandleScience.com. I really like Candle Science. I now from experience have found them to be the most reliable candle supply website um, and I yeah so I decided to buy them from them they are the LX 14 6 inch pre-tabbed wicks so they have the tabs at the bottom and then they're just these white wicks at the top I've also been ordering all of my candle wax from Etsy, so I've been ordering just soy wax flakes. I originally started out with a five pound bag from a seller called North Star Country Candle, and obviously I'll leave that linked below. That worked really well, but the second time around I wanted to order even more wax and get sort of more bang for my buck, even though it is very expensive to ship heavy things, obviously, so I ordered two 10-pound bags of wax, also from Etsy, from a place called Virginia Candle Supply. Same thing, they're just these wax flakes. They're all, all soy, and this is them. Yep, and then um, I'm not really sure what the like what these codes uh, GW415 means. Um, I'm not super well versed in the world of um, of candle wax, but there might be some reasoning behind that. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that will be the only time again that I have to buy wax because yeah, that's just a lot of wax. I was wrong, and I had to order five more pounds of wax. This time I ordered wax from CandleScience.com. Just got it in the mail. This is the 464 soy wax. It is, it comes in these individual one pound bags. I don't know why they do that. It would be nicer if it was just in one bag, but it's fine. So I ordered five pounds of that. I actually learned that the number on the wax does make a difference. Apparently the wax that I was using before, which it was the 415 wax, is better for blending with other waxes, such as paraffin wax. And because it's not really meant to be used on its own, it ends up being a little cracked on the top or a little like crumbly and so I had to go and refinish all of the tops of my candles that I made with that wax but it's not a big deal refinishing isn't that hard so I did a little bit of research and ended up ordering 464 for that reason because it just had better results for what I was using it for but yep ordered that this should finally be my last bit of wax for my last few candles. Beautiful. It takes a lot of wax to make a candle. So if you have a 16 ounce candle, you need 32 ounces of the wax flakes to boil down into 16 ounces. So you end up using a lot more than you think you might. And then in terms of scents, I've been getting all of my scents for my candles from a website called saveonscents.com. Save On Scents is really amazing because they kind of just have a really stocked full catalog of anything that you could want and it's really easy to shop through their website and they really organize everything really well. Um, it can be a little overwhelming but I just have a lot of fun like looking for scents and trying to figure out um, what's going to go well in my candles and just kind of like um, I really love reading the user reviews, and it's just it's just a really helpful site, but it's hard to shop for scents when you can't smell them, obviously. But they do do this really cool thing 
where they let you order these things called snippies. And so the snippies are just these little sample vials of the scents, and they're, I think it's a dollar each. I would order the snippies and then kind of narrow it down from there. So anything that sounded interesting to me, I would just like look up and let me tell you I've spent a lot of money on scents. And they really have anything from like designer knockoffs to like your classic sort of things to blend, like fragrance oils to blend your own perfumes, candles, soaps, whatever. And then they also have some really cool novelty scents. So there's really a lot to go on it. So I've ordered my fair share of snippies, so I'm not gonna go through each scent because I feel like that would take forever. But these are all my bags of snippies because I've been trying to narrow, really narrow it down. And I'm still not done like sampling scents, so you'll probably see some more. Yeah, so these are all the snippies. And maybe I'll just read you. We'll just we'll just test a couple out and see. Ooh, baked ham. Yeah, it smells like it smells like ham. This one is ointment. I really went in and ordered a bunch of the novelty scents because I was very curious. This one just smells very medicinal to me, almost like a eucalyptus kind of scent. There's some that are really spot on, there's some that don't smell anything like it. There are some that are very vague, so it's hard to know what it would smell like. Like there are ones like basement in here, band-aid, and then there's things like Old Spice and, you know, Bath and Body Works cucumber melon and whatnot. I'll just read you a couple. Nail polish remover, canned tuna, rain, Gardenia, smoke and odor deodorizer. I just ordered a batch um, the other night, so I'll probably share those when I get them. Glass cleaner, new carpet, oak moss, laundry room. So yeah, they're kind of, a lot of them are open to interpretation. Some are supposed to smell like a true thing, but you never know. So I have a bunch of those, and then from there, I've also narrowed it down to some larger bottles of the the oil. I'm usually working in two ounce and one ounce bottles with my candles because I'm not making super big batches of them. But I'll go ahead and show you what I have here of the oil. So I've got the Gardenia Lily, uh, which is the Bath and, Bath and Body Works type, meaning it is supposed to be a dupe for the Bath and Body Works Gardenia Lily scent. And it's, it's so good. This scent I specifically picked out because my mom would always use the Bath & Body Works Gardenia Lily scent. And so I kind of always associated it with my bathroom or my mom. And so I wanted to make some candles using that. I also got some, some of the cement scent. This one's a little more subtle. It really smells like... To me, it smells a little more plasticky. I'm interested to see how it'll blend with some of the other scents. This is two ounces of that. I also have a True Rain scent, which I was hoping to blend with the cement to get kind of a wet cement feel. And this, to me, just smells very clean, like very aquatic and clean. We also have Garden Mint. I know that also smelling it straight out of the bottle is not the best way to smell it. Another Gardenia scent that I ordered that to me isn't as nice as the Gardenia Lily. This is Mildew. I love the smell of Mildew, I don't know why. Cucumber Melon, which is another dupe, Bath & Body Works dupe. Oh. That just brings me right back to being a tween. Fresh cut grass, which to me really smelled more like, it really to me, it does smell like fresh cut grass, but it, it also smells like a wheatgrass shot to me. So there's something a little bit like sweet about it. Fresh dirt, which I love. Oh, it smells so good. I have no idea how they do it. I really don't. Oh, and then Fritos, which is maybe my favorite. Oh, it just smells like, delicious 
corn chips. It's kind of off-putting in a way. And I've used Fritos for a couple candles already. Hi, just hopping on really quickly to go through my latest order from SaveOnScents.com. I got it a few days ago and already went through it, but I figured I would do it on camera since I'm keeping you in the loop as to everything that I have purchased. So I got a selection of larger fragrance oils, one ounce and two ounce bottles, as well as two sets of sniffies. So I'll try and go through all of that really quickly. The first one is the Honeysuckle Rose, which I have smelled before. It smells really good. It's um, sort of a sweet rose scented oil. I also got the garlic, which I had never smelled before, but based off of reading the reviews, it sounded like it was going to be very, very true to the smell of garlic. And so, yeah, it really smells like garlic. I was not disappointed with this scent. I ordered some canned tuna. Fresh Dirt, Ooh. The Smoke, yeah it smells like, it smells like a cigar shop to me. Got the Citronella oil scented one. I actually didn't, hadn't smelled this one before and just kind of hoped that it would be true to scent. And it really is, it really really smells like Citronella. I got the guava scent, and I'm, I'm a little disappointed in the guava. It does smell like guava, but it's a little too sweet for me. And then the final larger bottle that I got was the Love Spell Victoria's Secret type, which um, is a perfume that I really associate with uh, growing up and being in middle school. So it's, a, it's something that I never wore myself, but this smell I recognize so much just from like my life but I can't I can't like attribute it to anyone or anything it just smells like middle school to me so I'm really excited to make some candles with that and then with the sniffies I got 10 total so I'm not gonna go through and smell all of these um, but I can tell you how I'm feeling about them so I got the Vermont maple syrup, which smells amazing. It literally smells like maple syrup. I got the leather, which I'm not super keen on, so I don't think I'll be using it. The hazelnut cappuccino, which I'm sort of on the fence with. I got one called Coffee Parentheses Italy, and to me it actually smells more like a coffee liqueur than actual coffee, um, but I thought that was a funny name. And then I got the Febreze original type which smells really good. I didn't grow up using Febreze and I, I never use it but um, to me it just smells like the kind of thing that you would spray to mask an odor which will be really useful. I'm thinking about blending it with the canned tuna to see if that gives me a distinctive smell. And then I also got one called Cigar Shop which to me I think the smoke scent encapsulates that a little bit better so I'm not sure that I'll be using it I got a yuzu one which smells really really good better than an orange and I got Tide Ooh, I just dropped one I got the Tide uh, detergent which I is good to, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it. Um, I don't want too many like cleaning agent smells. And then I got the Red Bull, which actually surprisingly smells pretty similar to Red Bull, but to me Red Bull really just smells like a citrusy bubble gum. So I might use that, but I'm not sure if it'll come across smelling like Red Bull or if it'll smell like something else. The one that I just dropped is a birthday cake one, and I believe, I really like this birthday cake one. I would like to potentially use it, but I'm not sure uh, for what I will be using it. This is my last box of fragrance oils from SaveOnScents.com. I've made so many separate orders to this website, but I finally narrowed down all of the remaining oils that I want. 
So I'll just go through them really quickly. We have one ounce of oak moss, two ounces of Vermont maple syrup, one ounce of lavender, one ounce of gasoline low octane, one ounce of champagne fizz, one ounce of pipe tobacco, one ounce of hazelnut cappuccino, an ounce of firewood, an ounce of birthday cake. Ooh, this one's green. An ounce of chamomile, an ounce of Febreze, an ounce of Christmas pine, two ounces of very vanilla, one ounce of yuzu, and I think that's it. I think the last candle related things I'm going to show are, I'll zoom you back out, are just some things I need uh, for making the actual candles. In order to make candles, you need to do a double boil uh, situation. So basically what that means is putting a pot into another pot with water in it, and then basically heating it up sort of indirectly with the hot water that's in the pot within it. So the idea is sort of like, I have this smaller pot, I have this bigger pot boiling water, and I put the smaller pot in, I put the wax in and I melt it down. So I have these two pods that I bought from the dollar store next to my house. I originally bought this one because I was still experimenting and didn't, I don't know, I don't know why. It was foolish of me to buy such a small pot because I'm working with slightly larger batches. So um, I ended up recently buying this larger pot for $15 that I can melt my wax into. And then I believe the smaller pot was like about $11. So yeah, but it's okay. So I have those. They actually make like special candle melting kind of like tall pots with like a, a handle that doesn't get hot. But I just figured I didn't really need that so I wasn't gonna get it. I feel like just using this works fine. I also just got these Avery labels that I sent out for in the mail. So Avery is like a popular label or sticker brand. I'm not really sure. Um, but they print labels for you or you can buy labels and get them and print them yourself at home. I sent out for some of them to get printed so I just have some of these here um, for my candles. And yeah, so I got them in the mail which is really exciting and I'll be putting those on. I can't believe we've spent like so long on candles. The next kind of grouping of objects has been buying these, making these sort of like rhinestone, um, gemstone flies. And so I bought a big bag of flies from sort of a party supply store. I think it was a bag of 72. I want to double check and just make sure where I got them from because I can't remember. Okay, so I got these flies from a website called Party Supplies Delivered. I don't think I'll use all 72 of them. But what I've been doing is I've been rhinestoning them. So originally I bought the the rhinestones or crystals for my flies at this nail art supply store in my neighborhood and they came in little bags like this. This this is all, my system is all messed up so I'm not going to be able to give you a super accurate portrayal of how they once looked. So they came in these little bags and usually each bag was um, six dollars. I got you got silver, red, blue, and green. It just ended up being a little more expensive than I wanted it to be. I also have these sort of like iridescent ones as well. So what I decided to do was I decided to move to seeing if I could source them online for cheaper. I ended up buying packs of these from Etsy and I'll link the seller and whatnot below. I have them in the red and the blue and the green. On top of that, I ended up buying two of these from Amazon and so they come with these little like tweezers. I'll just like pull it out but they come with this 
pencil, which I believe is just for picking up the individual rhinestones, and then they come with these tweezers as well. So I ordered two of them. I'm, I'm using rhinestones for another piece, which I'll show you in a little bit. So I'm not really actually sure if I'll need to be getting some more. Probably, I haven't really been a good judge of like what what is a lot. You know, like it's hard for me to tell when they're so small. So we'll see. But yeah, it comes in this really cool case. What I'm really interested in is getting like even bigger amounts, but as I've been looking online, I haven't really been able to find like super bulk amounts. And then the glue I've been using is the E6000 glue. And I get my E6000 glue from Michaels. So I physically go to Michaels and I get it, although you can also order it online. There are many websites where you can order it from. This glue is really great because it kind of is a little bit tacky like a hot glue but it doesn't need to be heated up and it's like it's a super glue so it holds a lot better in my opinion than a hot glue gun does but it's not like that weird wet super glue that if it gets anywhere it like ruins your entire life so this is just really easy to work with i will say it smells horrible and i'm pretty sure there's like a uh like a cancer warning slash like the vapor is really bad for you to breathe in I should be wearing a mask but I haven't been and I will hopefully get one soon so this is my backup and this is my first tube both from Michael the next thing which is sort of related to my gemstones is my chocolate fountain and this is just the box the fountain is behind me I'll move it over in a sec so I bought the Sephora Select Chocolate Fountain from Target.com. It was, I believe, $75, $60, somewhere around there. It was under $100. I did a lot of chocolate fountain-related research, which I never thought I would own a chocolate fountain or know anything about them. But I did a lot of comparison shopping online until I finally landed on the Sephora Select because to me it felt like it was going to be the quietest one and that seemed really important to me. Here's the actual chocolate fountain. It has uh, these plastic sort of tiers on it and I can pull them apart. It's got this device and then this is the the tower where it spills out and I think I need to adjust the settings or like the levels of this a little bit but I'm not using it quite yet. And then the base is just this really basic base. It hooks up, you have to turn it on. It's got this kind of bowl in the center. It can heat up or it can be cold. Um, I'll probably use it cold because I don't need to melt chocolate in it. I'm using oil in it. It'll already be liquid. And I'll be covering this in the silver rhinestones. A couple of weeks ago, I went to Marshalls and grabbed about a pound of facial oils. I still need about two to three more pounds of facial oils for my fountain, so I'm going to be going to TJ Maxx this weekend and hopefully picking the rest of that up, so I'll show you what that looks like. I got the organic castor oil and lavender for $6.99. I got this anti-wrinkle rosehip oil from a brand called Advanced Clinicals. It has vitamin E, vitamin C, and rosehip oil with cucumber and sunflower oils. I also got this night repair oil with vitamin E and neroli oil from the PM Lab. This was $6. And finally, I got this soothing facial hemp seed oil with green tea from Clean Beauty, and this was $5. Hi, hopping on again really quickly to haul a few more things that I picked up today. I was running some errands and I stopped by TJ Maxx and picked up the remaining oils that I need for my fountain. So I'm just going to show you what I got. They're really nice and individually wrapped, each oil. It looks like I got seven oils in total, around two pounds of oil, and I'll just really quickly run you through everything that I got. I got the Measurable Difference Jojoba Oil. Four, 
four ounces of that for six dollars. The Rose Multi-Use Oil for hair and skin and nails and body. It's got these petals floating around in it for six dollars. This Illuminating Face Oil with Rose Hip Oil and Vitamin C. It looks a little bit similar to a Sunday Riley bottle, but it was only six dollars. The Overnight Repair Retinol and Blue Tansy Facial Oil. I really love this color. This was also, oh, this was $7. This Argon and Vitamin E Nourishing Facial Oil from Pearl Essence. I think I've heard of that brand before. This was $7. These two bottles of bath and shower oil. I just thought these were really pretty and I was looking for a larger volume of oil. This is the Honeysuckle and White Flowers. This is the Jasmine and Rose. The next couple items are going to be a little bit bigger or harder to show in one frame, so I apologize for that. But the next thing I got were are these windows from Lowe's. Um, sorry if it's hard to tell what's going on here. I think they're upside down, but you've seen a window before. I literally don't know what brand they are, but they're these 24 by 36 inch windows and I really wanted them to have, I think these are called grills, maybe? I really wanted them to have the grills on the bottom and the top. I went to Lowe's in person originally and was looking for them, ended up talking to someone there. We tried to order custom ones, the custom ones were going to be like $400 each, and then I pulled up the website when I was talking um, with the person who was helping me, and I found these, and they were kind of exactly what I wanted, and a lot cheaper. I think each one of these was $119. Another large piece is this gondola end cap unit that I bought. I'll insert a picture of what this is supposed to look like, but I'm just gonna show you kind of a general glimpse as to what this is. So it's behind my bed. This is the, um, can you see me? I'm sorry, I can't see anything. This is the backing part to it, and then these are the shelves. And then there's just like these random pieces as well. I got it on Craigslist for $85. I really was trying to avoid buying one new because I really just, I know that um, these are in like every store and I knew that like someone was getting rid of them because their store closed or whatever. For my final grouping of objects for now, for today. I've been working a lot with growing my own plants from seeds and so I've been sort of on this journey of sourcing seeds from online and growing them and it's sort of this whole operation and yeah it's just a lot so I'm gonna try and go through as thoroughly as I can with everything that I've gotten for that. So the first seeds that I've been growing are these seeds that I got from Johnny's Selected Seeds. Um, I think it's called Johnny Select. It was recommended to me by a lot of people. They didn't have every type of plant that I wanted, so I only ended up getting these two from them, but I ended up getting a lot of other stuff from them. I got a starter kit from them as well for growing seeds. I ordered uh, two types of clover, so I ordered red clover and I ordered white clover. So this is what they look like. These instructions on the back, they're really nice. I also couldn't order like less than like a quarter pound of each which is like way too many for my needs but um, I guess that's fine. I will say out of all the seeds I bought the Johnny Select seeds were the best at germinating. They all they grew really quickly and they've been they've been the best. They've just been the best so they've been really good. I also bought a bunch of other seeds from uh, a bunch of sellers on Etsy. So after the Johnny Select stuff I really went into Etsy world to source the rest of my seeds. I ordered a lot of seeds from a, an Etsy seller called Our Buckeye Farms. And I ordered some mugwort seeds, which I haven't planted yet. I also ordered some broadleaf plantain, and these were a bust. I, none of them germinated, so I don't really know why, um, what I did wrong, or if they were just kind of bad seeds. I think I ordered one other one from them, but I can't remember 
uh, what that was. I also ordered uh, from Etsy Queen Anne's Lace seeds, ground ivy seeds, uh, which from under the sun seeds, which also didn't germinate. I may have cold stratified them wrong. Cold stratification basically means that you need to simulate winter for them and then they will start to grow so you need to give them like a cold treatment for a couple of weeks um, and then plant them as normal and that that will kind of signal that spring has come. I'm clearly very bad at cold stratifying. I'm cold stratifying my mugwort right now so fingers crossed that that works. I also ordered some dandelion seeds from another website. I promise I'll put everything. Oh, it's called Aoka Farm. Um, I promise I'll put everything in the description. So this is the Queen Anne's Lace. Chickweed seeds from Palm Beach Medicinals. The dandelion seeds and the ground ivy. I also got a pack of 110 nursery pots from Amazon. I think it was like $11 for all of these. And I just needed a large amount of nursery pots to repot some of my seedlings into because I want to plant some more stuff into those trays and germinate as much as possible before the show opens. I also picked up some neem oil spray. And the reason I picked up this trusty neem oil is because my clovers ended up getting what I believe are spider mites. I'm not 100% positive that that's what they have, but from all of my research and kind of what the plants are starting to look like, um, they've been getting some dots on their leaves and then I'll see these little white, very, very, very small white mites um, walking around on them. And sometimes you can see it with the naked eye. I've also looked like under a little um, microscope, like handheld microscope thing at them. And so if you know anything about spider mites, you know that they are very, very, very hard to get rid of. I've actually never successfully gotten rid of spider mites before. They're just a huge pain in the ass. I've only ever dealt with spider mites one other time, and it was when I bought a house plant that clearly had them when I purchased it and I didn't notice until it was too late and the plant was essentially covered in webs. And what spider mites do is that they, they damage the leaf and they start to build these webs and it makes it harder and harder to kill them because these webs are sort of acting as a protective barrier. And the reason they happen is they really, really like dry uh, climates, so dry, warm climates indoors. And in the winter, it's very dry, your radiator heat, it's very warm, and so it's really a perfect breeding ground for spider mites. So I went online and I asked around and some, a lot of people told me to use neem oil sprays. I pruned the super damaged leaves and then I've just been spraying with neem oil um, once a week. It seems like it's getting better. I'm a little concerned that I didn't quarantine the clovers soon enough, so I'm a little afraid that the spider mites have already spread to my other plants in my setup. Because of the spider mite situation, I've been a little worried that they might get to my other plants and that my clovers aren't going to make it, and my clovers are my most mature plants, so I planted the clovers back in November, so they're a couple months old now. So as a backup, I ended up deciding to go on Etsy and buy a couple new seeds just in case the spider mite thing gets worse. It's such a difficult process growing plants from seeds, and this is really my first time doing it. I've been taking care of houseplants for a little while now, but I've never really gone into the seed starting universe, and there's just a lot that can go wrong in the beginning stages of a plant's life before it's a very mature plant. And so I just wanted to have all my bases covered. I also want to have as big of a variety of weeds as possible, so I ended up going on Etsy and ordering a series of new seeds, and I will show those to you. So these are all the new seeds. We have some English plantain, some lamb's quarters, some broadleaf plantain, Chinese plantain, as well as this bonus broadleaf plantain purple perversion. <laughs> In order to grow these seeds indoors, I needed to buy grow lights, and so this was also my first sort of venture into grow lights. I ended up deciding on 
these grow lights from GE. I get the ones for seeds and greens, and I have six of them. So, and then I fix them onto clamp lights and just put them up, like, point them towards the flats with the plants in them, and then that's that. The flats I got from Johnny's uh, Select Seeds, and so basically Johnny sells a starter kit for growing seeds, and so it comes with some humidity domes, some uh, seed flats, and then the trays to catch, you know, any water. They had a variety of different flats, but I basically used almost everything, and then I supplemented by buying some stuff from my local garden supply or plant store. Um, there's a store that I really like where I buy my stuff. I buy my uh, seed starting mix from them, and then I buy my planting soil from them, and then I also bought the extra flats from them as well. I also use just like this seed hormone that they make, which I don't think you can get. I mean, you can get you can get seed hormones online, but she just kind of poured me a little bottle of it, and this was like three dollars. And I just like add a little bit to my water every time I water. I'll give you sort of an example of the flats that I ordered. So this is a typical flat from Johnny's. It just has these these little things in it and then I'm sorry there's gonna be dirt like all over my room and then this is the tray that kind of catches it and then I think these are actually from my garden supply store but um, these are the humidity dome so you can keep the humidity dome on top of the flat and it would you keep that on until it germinates also these all the lights I got were from Target you can get them at Target they're like ten dollars each I highly recommend them. I also highly recommend them as like supplemental light in the winter for your houseplants if you're a houseplant person. Welcome to my beautiful um, seed growing sort of situation over here. So right here we've got my dandelion seeds. Here we have my um, my clovers. We've got the white clover over here, we've got red clover, and then we have the setup where I have these grow lights just hanging up over here. Um, yeah, and then got an empty row down here. And then down at the bottom, we have some chickweed, some, I actually don't know what this plant is. I thought it was Queen Anne's Lace, but when I looked up what a Queen Anne's Lace seedling looks like, it looks nothing like this. So I'm sort of starting to wonder if I got like seeds for something else, or if my Queen Anne's Lace seeds like never germinated. I'm not really sure what these are, um, but I guess we'll maybe find out, maybe not. And then this is more chickweed. So yeah, this is my, this is my little setup. And then this shelf is from Target. I believe it was like 40 or $50. This is from Gardener's Supply Company. These are two self-watering window boxes. I'm not sure what all these bits are in these boxes, so I guess I'll open one of them up. So it looks like these are the brackets for the window boxes. I assume for mounting them onto the wall and then holding the window box. I actually didn't know that they came with these, so that is really helpful. I thought I was going to have to order some. These are the actual window boxes themselves. They are self-watering window boxes. I'm not really sure how that works. I believe you put the water in, like down here, um, underneath these grates, and then it pumps the water up. Hmm. I'm not really sure. This just, this seems a little tall. So, I found the instructions. Alright, so it seems like it's going to be okay. Hopping on here to do a quick plant update. So, a lot has changed since the first time I filmed over here. 
So I moved some of the dandelions over here into nursery pots as well as some of the chickweed. I still have chickweed living in here that needs to be put into nursery pots as well as like a few dandelions. The dandelions ended up getting what I believe was some sort of fungus as you can sort of see here, if not I'll insert pictures. There's some redness around the edges and there's some dots on the leaves as well. I don't think it has anything to do with the spider mite situation, but I do believe it is a fungus. However, the, a lot of the new growth is looking pretty green, so I think spraying it with the neem oil worked. Then I have some new sprouts of mugwort. I'm really excited about these. Moving down to the bottom row, we have some new clovers, red clover over here, and white clover over here. Sorry, it's not gonna focus very well, but they're sprouting up, they're looking okay. I decided to abandon my spider mite clover situation. I'm gonna keep an eye on them still, I'm not gonna totally toss them, but it's important that these do well. Over here I have some seedlings that just sprouted up. These are the broadleaf plantain medley. I took, I just took the humidity dome off today. So these are the lamb's quarter seedlings. They just sprouted up and they're really hard to tell. Their stems for some reason aren't very green. So yeah, you just can't really see what's going on here, but they are here, so that's good. I realized I didn't film an outro for this video, so I'm just gonna do it right now, really quickly. This is me bidding you farewell. Thank you for watching this really, really, really long haul video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe it inspires you to make some candles or start some seeds or do whatever it is you need to do. Yeah, so thanks for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.